Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you step by step one of the quickest and easiest ways to create your own custom coloring book and that is by using the power of AI. With just a few clicks you'll be able to transform any image idea into a fun and engaging coloring page which you can then put together into a coloring book and publish it on Amazon KDP. However, if this is the first time you'll be creating a book to publish on Amazon KDP, then I highly recommend you start out by watching my other video on low content journal publishing first, as that video will show you all the foundational knowledge you will need in order to get started. And for the rest of you, let's get started on creating our first AI generated coloring book. Make sure you watch until the end as you wouldn't want to miss out on any of the tips and tricks I'm about to show you. And if you enjoy the video, Please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. If you already have a specific coloring book idea in mind, then you can probably skip this step. Otherwise, if you're looking to generate some ideas in terms of unique coloring book that you could create, ChatGPT is actually a great source to at least help stimulate some ideas. So what I'm going to ask ChatGPT is, let's say I know I want to create a coloring book relating to hamsters, but I just don't know how do I make it unique. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT, please give me a book idea. Relating to hamsters. Okay, so very quickly it's starting to generate some ideas. So let's see what it's got. Hamster adventures, hamster fashion, hamster habitat, hamster breeds, hamster holidays, hamster foodies. That's cute. Hamster professions, hamster sports. Hamster Garden, Hamster Dreams. Hamster Dreams is pretty cute, actually. A coloring book that depicts hamsters in different dream scenarios, such as flying in a hot air balloon, swimming with dolphins, or visiting space. Okay, so for purposes of illustration, let's say I decide to pick Hamster Dreams. Okay, so as a next step, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to give me, let's say, 25 coloring page ideas relating to number 10 above. And I put number 10 because that was the 10th idea that they generated in the last query we made. So let's see what they come up with. A hamster flying a hot air balloon over a cityscape, a hamster sailing on a pirate ship in the ocean, a hamster astronaut exploring a planet, hamster riding a unicorn in a magical forest, a hamster swimming with dolphins in the ocean, a hamster exploring a mysterious ancient temple, a hamster traveling through time in a time machine, and a whole lot more. Hamster discovering Kinston, hamster exploring a haunted mansion with ghosts and ghosts. Okay, so you can definitely generate more than 25, but for a start, I'm going to just ask it to generate 25, and I'm going to now hop on over to Midjourney to show you how to translate these ideas into an actual coloring page. So now that we have our listing of 25 coloring page ideas generated from ChatGPT, what we can do is then hop on over to Midjourney and start creating the coloring pages using those ideas. So what I'm going to do is first hop back over here and we can either start at the top and continue to move down assuming you like all of these ideas or you can start with the ones that you like best. And so let's just say I want to start with this one, a hamster surfing on a giant wave. I'm going to come back to mid journey and I'm going to put in a prompt. And this part's going to be important because we want to make sure our prompt will allow the mid journey bot to help us create an actual coloring page relating to that idea. So I'm going to put imagine and then I'm going to paste in what I had just copied from chat GPT, which is a hamster surfing on a giant wave. And I'm going to add actually cute because I want it to look cute a cute hamster surfing on a giant wave. And what we want to add here is for coloring book with crisp lines and white background. And in addition to that, I'm going to add in the aspect ratio as well. So I'm going to put in AR17 colon 22. And what that does is it'll create the illustrations for us in a proportion that would be sort of like an A4 size. 
because most covering books are usually around A4 size. So this will help us make sure that the illustration that's generated by Midjourney will be proportionate to that size. So I'm going to hit enter and let's see what happens. All right, I think from a coloring book perspective, just because of how thick the lines are, this one is probably the best one. So let's say if I want to go ahead and choose this one out of the four that have been provided to me as an example, then I'm going to upscale this one. So one, two, three, four, this is the third picture. So I'm going to click on U3, which will upscale it to the max quality that Midjourney is able to provide to us. Okay, so what we want to do now is to download this upscaled version of the coloring sheet. So I'm going to save image as and put it in our downloads and save it. All right, so now that we have the upscaled version of the coloring page downloaded from Midjourney to our laptop, what we're going to do is head on over to an image and larger tool. Um, and you can really use any image and larger tool that you might already be familiar with. The one that we're going to be using today is AI.ImageEnlarger, and the link for this tool has been included in the description of my video below. So all you need to do is to sign up for an account with your email address, and then you can start to enlarge your images. The one thing I should point out is that the free account really just gives you eight credits, meaning that you can enlarge eight images for free, after which if you want to enlarge more images than that, then you'll actually need to sign up for a paid account. A $9 a month account will give you 100 credits a month, and then $19 a month will be 500 credits a month. And like I mentioned, if there's another image and larger tool that you've always been familiar with you can use that one as well. So I'm going to head back over here and start enlarging the image that we had just downloaded from Midjourney. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to select it from my laptop, open it, and so you'll have the option to either enlarge it by two times or four times. For purposes of our coloring book, two times would be sufficient. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to hit on start. So you might be wondering, like I've already upscaled it as part of Midjourney, why do I still have to enlarge it using this additional tool here? The reason is because the Midjourney image that you had downloaded, even though proportionately it's in the right size for an A4 coloring book, it's not actually at that full size. And so you definitely want to enlarge it before you use it because otherwise when you print it out in a coloring book, the lines might end up being blurry and we definitely don't want that. Okay, so it looks like we're done. So I'm going to hit on download. And there we have it. So I'm going to save this as well. And I put in my downloads. Maybe I'll put the hamster one. Save it. And we're done. All right, so now that we have, let's say, completed all of the coloring pages and we've now enlarged the coloring pages following the steps that I had just mentioned previously, then we're going to hop on into Canva to start creating our actual coloring book. And we're going to be using Canva to do both of our cover as well as the interior for the coloring book. And so I already have a page set up for our interior with the correct margins and page sizes. So in terms of the page size, we're going to use 8.5 by 11 inches, which is the most common size for coloring books that I've seen on Amazon KDP. And if you're not sure how to determine like the page sizes, bleed versus no bleed, or setting up the margins, Please watch my other video linked over here relating to low content book publishing, which will show you all the foundational steps you need in order to set up your pages, sizes, margins, and all of that good stuff. So let's get started. And what we're going to do is okay, I'm going to go to upload and I'm going to upload the image that we had just created and enlarge and I'm going to put it right here. And you can see that if you go a little closer, you can see that there's a, a bit of a gray tint compared to the actual white background. So we don't really want that. So the trick around that is select the image, click on edit image, and click on background remover. So now you'll see the gray tint is gone and the background is pure white, which is exactly what we want. Push it out a little bit. And what we also want to do is, so we zoom in just to make sure we're still good. Yep. 
So there are no blurry lines, which is perfect. And so what we're going to do is also add a black border around it just to make it look a little more professional and prettier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come here, go to lines and shapes and click on the square. I'm going to turn it into black. Make sure you don't exceed any of the margins. Actually, I should probably change this first. So I'm going to make sure that we have a line and border weight. Let's put five for now. And then I'm going to get rid of the color inside because all I want is the border. So I'm going to put no color inside. So now you can see we have a border. Now we just want to stretch this out to right before the margins. And there we go. So that's one coloring page. And what you would do is basically repeat the same process for the rest of your pages. And the other tip that I have is we don't want a coloring page on every single page. I would basically skip one page and have one bit blank page and then have my next coloring page on alternating pages, basically, because you want the back of each coloring page to be blank just in case any of the colors sort of go through just for a better customer experience. And you'll basically just repeat the steps that I've just shown you until you have the desired number of pages. And keep in mind that in order to publish on Amazon KDP, you'll need at least 24 pages. All right, so now that we have completed the interior part of our coloring book, we're going to go work on the cover. And for the cover, we're also going to be leveraging a combination of Canva and Midjourney to help us. So within Canva, I've already set up the template for our cover, and I've also downloaded the Amazon KDP cover template into this file here. If you're not familiar with how to get to this step, I would highly recommend you to watch the video that I've linked on top, which is a step-by-step -step tutorial on low content book publishing publishing for Amazon KDP, which will show you all of these steps and foundational knowledge you'll need to know in order to properly set up your pages, margins for both interior and the cover. Now hopping back into this file, I'm going to lower the transparency a little bit because this is really just a reference file for us to see where the margins are, where the barcode is, where the spine is, so that we make sure we don't have any font or text or any critical images that will be overlapping uh, in any of these areas. Okay, so now I'm going to head over to Mid Journey and actually get it to help us design a cover. So given the theme of our coloring book is related to hamster dreams, I'm going to put imagine and maybe I'll put cute hamsters dreaming uh, illustration. And I'm going to put in an aspect ratio of 17 by 22 again, just to align with the size of the book and the pages that we have. So these are all pretty cute. We can pick one of these that we like best. I think I actually like the third one. Okay, so I'm going to download this one, upscale it. All right, so now that we have the upscaled version of our cover image, we're going to download it. And once we download it, I won't show it again, but what you would want to do is, um, what you would want to do is to take it back to the AI image enlarger tool and upsize it again by two times just to make sure that we have a good quality image to work with. So once you've done that, we're going to hop back over here to Canva and we're going to upload the cover image that we have. Okay. Now we're going to use this and it's okay if these ones go over the margin a little bit as long as it's not any of the critical images. You just don't want like a hamster's ear to be cut off or something like that. But aside from that, a little bit of the background being cut off is not a big deal. So now we're going to create the rest of the cover and it's really up to you how you want to do it. I'm just going to quickly demonstrate the way that I usually do it. So you want to find whatever background color you think matches. You can even use um, the eyedropper tool to get something very similar here. Or if you don't like that part, you can use you know, this part. It's really up to you. I think I'm going to use this color. Okay, and then I'm also going to add a little section here. And actually, i got to do the transparency a little bit just so I can see the background to make sure this doesn't 
oops, make sure it doesn't go onto the margins or the spines. I'm going to make this a little bit more transparent as well. And then once we're done, we can change it back. Uh, so I'm going to have a little title section here with the name of the book. And I'm going to see if I like this color in a bit. But for now, I'm just going to put in some text. Hamster dreams. Do something that fits a little bit better, a bit cuter. Let's see what we can find. This one's not bad, so I'm going to try to use this one. So now on the back cover, I want to add a little description. So I already have one that I have created previously. And so I pasted that in here. Uh, this is just a short little description to describe what the coloring book is all about. Okay, so then now what we're going to do is also put in some sample pages in the back just so people know what they could expect to find inside the book. So I'm going to go back to my upload section where I previously uh, uploaded all my coloring pages. And I'm going to pick... A couple that I feel like best represents my book to put it in the back cover. I'm just going to make them a little smaller, just as sample pages. I'm going to put a few more in there. And just make sure they're consistent in sizes. Okay, I'm going to go add another one here. Make sure the sizes are the same. And there we go. Our cover is complete with the front and back cover, and it's ready to be downloaded as a PDF and uploaded into Amazon KDP along with the previous interior that we had created. And that's it. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And I'll see you next time.